Hopefully we've all heard about headless UI now. You know, the idea of UI pieces that don't prescribe UI, they just help you with the interaction part. But have you heard of boneless UI? What about skinless UI? What if I told you these were all terms that are being invented now as a way to try and talk about how we construct our UI libraries? And it also happens to fit the Halloween theme really well, doesn't it? This article by Adam is stunning. I'm super excited to dive into this article with y'all about how to build in this weird modern UI world and how to think about component libraries. Huge shout out to Adam for writing this. Before we dive in though, quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Upload Thing. If you didn't know, this isn't my full-time job. I love YouTubing and I certainly put 40 hours a week in, but Upload Thing is where I'm putting most of my actual work time. It's the best way to do file uploads, especially for us Next.js developers. It's so easy to get set up. We actually were running speed runs for a bit to see how quick people could set up Upload Thing. The record time was under five seconds from a brand new project to file uploads done safely in facing users, five seconds, what? I'm so proud of what we built. For almost all use cases, we already are the best way to do file uploads and anything that we're not, we're working on it. By the way, I'm not paying myself to put this in. This is here because we didn't have an ad. If you would like to buy an ad in a spot like this, you might be surprised by the price. Hit us up, youtube at t3.gg. Let's dive right in on this, I'm excited. Headless, boneless, skinless, and lifeless UI. UI abstractions continue to evolve year over year. Let's talk about a couple of them, what they do, and a little about why, and tease them a bit with some silly names. I like the call out here that nobody actually says these terms after I just said all of these terms. We'll see where we end up. Should be fun. Anyways, God, I love the little animations. Adam's the best. He immediately calls out that he won't be covering components with that have heads, bodies, skins, and bones like Chakra, Shadcian, Radix, and MUI. These are all fully loaded. I wouldn't even say Radix necessarily is. It's it's It provides a lot of primitives, but Fair. Chat's already saying, I'm going to start using these terms. Please help me make them stick. Yeah, these are good terms. I guess, yeah, Radix has both components and primitives, to be fair. And these solutions are fully loaded, which means they have batteries included effectively, and they have their own mix of abstractions for bones, skins, and life. This post is more interested in the layered abstractions that the front end community is using now so they can compose the layers themselves, moving quickly, but with higher customizability in order to build their own design systems and fulfill their own unique application logic. So here are the terms as defined by Adam. Reminder that none of these are, are real terms since nobody's using them yet, but I can see him catching on. We got headless, which is working components that don't have styles, you bring those yourself. There's boneless, which is just the styles. So you bring your own life effectively. You provide the thing that the styles attached to as well as the logic behind it. Skinless, which is just the HTML part. You have to bring everything else. And bodyless. So this is the state part. So like the use selector hook or use input that you would have in something like React. It doesn't provide any of the markup or styling at all. It's just the state part. So let's start with headless UI. Pretty common term. I'm curious, does this link to headless UI like the library? It does. Cool. Headless UI is one of the libraries for doing headless UIs that was built by the Tailwind team in order to make it easier to build your own component library with Tailwind. Pretty cool stuff, but Radix is slowly won. And as Adam says here, this is the one term in the post that's actually common jargon amongst front-end developers. There's even a whole library that tries to embody the category. That's a good pun, good work. Yeah, headless UI. This is what a headless UI offering looks like in code. So you see you have the import for popover, popover button and panel all from headless UI and then you use their components. But these don't provide styles, they are just workflow components effectively. So you provide the styles via class names yourself. They're components that come bundled with functionality. They have bones and they have very minimal style. Headless doesn't quite match what you get, in my opinion, since these totally have a brain, muscle, and structure. The mismatch is what led to the author creating the terms boneless, skinless, and bodiless. Here's an incomplete list of headless libraries, which also includes Radix primitives, by the way, so I, I wasn't totally wrong calling that out. But these are all things that don't really give you much UI because they're designed to let you provide the UI and the styling yourself. Then we have boneless UI. This abstraction layer is all about composable styles, styles without markup, skin without bones. On their own, boneless libraries don't do much, but when applied to bones, you can compose nice UIs. I, I just can't unsee the boneless, which is a skateboard trick where you use one leg to jump. It's just all I can think of whenever I read this. Hello. Just show, oh, rest in peace, Ben Ramers. No, I didn't see it was Ben. He's one of my all-time favorites. He passed away a few years ago. Oh. 
Oh yeah, that's the boneless. It's when you pop the board into your hand and then use your leg to get most of the the jump. <sighs> that makes me sad. I love Ben. I also want to call these Raymers UI just in, in, in tribute. Love that dude. Anyways, I'll stop thinking about skateboarding and focus on UI libraries. Here's an example of a boneless UI. It doesn't do much, but once you apply it to bones, you can compose a nice UI. So here's some Tailwind, where the Tailwind library provided skin supplied to some bones. So the bones would be the div and the A tags, and then the Tailwind is the, the skin on top. So the value, wait, Tailwind is, oh yeah, so oh, boneless, yeah. So Tailwind's the, the skin, but there is no bones. They don't have components. They don't even have HTML. It's just the CSS. So boneless UI could also be like UI skin, almost, think about it. It's a part on the outside that has to be applied to that structure, but it's useless without the structure underneath it. Things like Bootstrap, Tailwind, Bulma, Open Props, all of these solutions are boneless libraries because they don't tell you even how to apply. They just give you the pieces that you use as classes, and that's really it. Then there's skinless UI. It's like headless UI, but it's entirely unstyled, and it's functioning bones. No brains, no heart, no skin. While checking out headless UI libraries, if they're unstyled, I would put them in this category instead. So a skinless popover UI offering from React Area would just look like this in code. Uh, that's a style you're telling it with in height. I'm joking. This is very unstyled, but you have to take over if you want to actually make it styled like this. This won't do anything until you start applying styles. It'll just be like a default div effectively. These libraries often order CSS starting places or helper layouts and positioning, but the goal is to let you have full styling control. You can even see little bits of styling in line in the bones, hinting or providing meaningful minimal defaults as to the styling that you'll likely use, like the class names or the flex call here or what I mentioned before with the SVG stuff. Like those are hints of styling, but you have to apply most of it yourself. I'm not super familiar with ArcUI. I've been hearing it more and more. Yeah, as they say here, it's entirely unstyled. So the things are just using the browser defaults until you apply styles yourself, often through things like Tailwind. Makes a lot of sense. There's React Aria, which is similar to Headless UI or Radix UI, but it's by the crew over at Adobe. It's in a really good state overall. My team was harassing me, so we're going to talk about Area Kit too. It's one of these libraries specifically. It is providing unstyled primitive components, which means it's skinless, right? Because it has the logic part. Yeah. Should have mentioned it before, but all of chat spamming here. Area Kit's just super high quality, headless, best in class. It's great. Seems phenomenal. I... Yeah, it, it's something I have yet to play with, but I know Diego decently well. Phenomenal developer. Very excited to play with this at some point. I just, I, I'm so on Chad CN, which does all of the gluing for me. It's hard for me to make the move, but I could absolutely see myself playing with this. Apparently, this is what will convince me. Access and manipulate the state of area components in a performant way through component stores. Combo box, use combo box store. And I can pass that to different things and control it externally. It's like a use form store. I can set default values. I can call control on it separately and I can dump it on things too. Use store state, but you pass it one of their stores. Very interesting. I can see why you nerds with your crazy UI patterns and weird search bullshit for stuff like Axiom would take a ton of advantage of this. Interesting. Yeah, all their components can either be past direct state and do things in controlled ways, or you can pass it their custom select store that does it out of bound. Very interesting. How many times have I done const open set open equals use state false with radix? <sighs> Fair point. Fair point. And now we have a lifeless UI. Another category that would usually get lumped into headless, but I feel there's more precise ways to describe a subset of these headless kits. Like spirits, phantoms, or ghosts that know stuff, but can't actually manifest it into the real world. So they're lifeless UI abstractions. Tanstack has their lifeless offerings, apparently. Interesting. Like their type safe hooks, they don't actually render or supply any UI elements, and their focus is maximum inversion of control in mind. I, I will say this Tanner's the one who really caused my brain to light up about this possibility. He's one of the first big like React library authors that never gave you real components. Occasionally, Tanner would give you things like a, a wrapper component that was like a, a context provider or a thing for like React Windows so that it would virtualize stuff outside of the current view, but nothing that was styled ever. I also see that we have some Tanstack contributors in chat. Wonder if Tanstack should use the same terminology. 
I'm not opposed either way. I trust y'all to make up the decision because you guys normalize this way of thinking. It's on us developers to wire up these functions to appropriate elements and styles, as if we're inserting a spirit into a body of bones and skin. This is what a TanStack range input lifeless UI offering looks like in code. So there's the TanStack React Ranger, which is their range element. And it's not even an element. It's Is the capital R Ranger even a component here? Oh, here it is. On change, it's a Ranger instance of an HTML div element. So that's literally just being used for the type definition here, and that's it. Yeah, you don't get real components from it. You just call their hook, and then you connect it to things using their use Ranger hook to do the binding to the HTML. And now we have this ref that is pointing to the Ranger ref, which binds all of the behavior. There's an example set of these with TanStack stuff, floating UI. I covered floating UI a bunch before, as well as Zag.js, which I see people in chat freaking out about. It's UI components powered by finite state machines. Very interesting. Yeah, use machine, and then you bind the machine to elements. You call like API.getRootProps. props. When you see stuff like this, where you're dumping props and values into default HTML elements, that's when you know you're, you're stumbling into the lifeless UI stuff. A timely for the month and tongue-in-cheek abstract article about ghostly abstractions. Good summary here. As Nils said, this post doesn't even cover how much JS work that the HTML and CSS are covering for you, like popover, anchor, dialogue, view transitions, scroll-driven animations, and custom select. So more and more, you don't even need the JS to do those things. The HTML and CSS can, but having the right abstractions makes gluing it all together much easier. And I like this framing a lot. It's increasingly time for me to update my old video one of my most popular, where I compared all of the different modern CSS solutions. It's been two years since I published that. Jesus Christ, time flies. I've only been doing YouTube for a bit over two years. That's this pre-mustache, Theo. God, who whoever trusted this smug asshole for opinions? I count time in pre and post mustache, Theo. Love it. If you enjoyed this, definitely give Adam a follow. Legendary dev in the space, deep on the Chrome team and web standards stuff. I'm one of my favorite people to talk about these things with at random events. Great dude, great article, definitely worth a follow. And until next time, peace nerds.